Romans chapter 12, 3 is a key text in the faith and prosperity gospel. Many charismatics read this text as saying that God has given each individual, each believer, the same amount of faith. And it's up for us to use that faith, to make it grow and then learn how to release it. Well, is that what Paul meant? Let's look at the text together. I'm Dr. Michael Stenhammer. I'm a Pentecostal charismatic pastor and theologian. I grew up in the faith and prosperity gospel. I was myself even a preacher, but I realized that there were some biblical problems here. There were some issues that makes the movement sick, but it's a sickness that needs to be healed. That's why I started liberating faith, because I want to disentangle faith from some of these misunderstandings. Listen to Romans chapter 12, 3 in the King James Version. It is the version that was favored among the early Word of Faith teachers, and they seared in on this phrase. So let's look at it. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. That is the phrase that the early Word of Faith teacher focused in on. And that, it, that phrase itself answered their main question. And that was, how do we acquire a measure? How do we acquire this God kind of faith? And then they found this text and said, yeah, okay, so every believer has given the, been given the same amount of faith. Now let's just make it grow and use it. But that's not what it means. I'll show you two reasons why Paul never meant to say the measure of faith, even understood as the word of faith thinks, as a, as a force or even a power, that's not what Paul talks about. He doesn't talk about quantity of faith. I'll give you two reasons why. The first reason is from the Greek text itself, because the original Greek should be translated a measure of faith, because Paul did not use the Greek definite article before measure. If you're interested in some of these Greek details, download my study notes. I go into some details there where you can dig deeper. Paul knew how to put the definite article before measure, if he wanted to, and he did that in Ephesians 4, 7. So, Paul did not want to put this in definite article. So, it should be translated, a measure of faith or something similar. The New Testament scholar James Dunn, he paraphrases this as, each has been given some measure of faith. And I think that's a helpful translation. The second reason why it should not be understood as the measure of faith at least the way the word of faith reads it, is the context of the very text itself. And we could read the larger context of Romans chapter 12. In fact, it would be enough just reading the verse itself. Listen into now, and I'm going to use the New American Standard Bible, which is also a version that is used a lot in the word of faith movement. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each one a measure of faith. Notice how Paul begins this verse, through the grace given to me. So the whole verse starts out with Paul recognizing that not every believer has the same gifting, that not every believer is anointed by the Spirit and gifted by the Spirit in the same way. And that is what you will find in the, the following verses as well, that Paul actually emphasizes that there is a diversity of anointing, there's a diversity of grace, there's a diversity of gifting in the body of Christ. So when it comes to the expression faith later on in the same verse, why should it be understood differently? That if there is a difference in grace among believers, why would he then just throw in, but we all have the same amount of faith anyway? It doesn't make sense. The emphasis is on diversity and that it should be a unity and humility among the diversity of giftings in the body of Christ. Moving on from just the verse itself, let's read the wider context and you will see that this is what Paul must mean. For just as we have many members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or 
he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Notice here how Paul really puts an emphasis that we have gifts that differ according to the different graces or the different anointings and giftings by the Holy Spirit. This is the message of Paul, that we have been gifted differently. We have been graced differently. And through those different graces and anointings of the Spirit, we should serve the body of Christ. Listen to how the New Testament scholar Craig Keener, whom I really recommend, notice how he comments on this verse. Faith here refers not to a given amount of faith, but rather faith for a given ministry in the body. I think that's a very helpful way of looking at it. Even Ben Witherington makes a good comment here. Listen to what he says. Faith here does not refer to saving faith, but faith that gives one a power to do special things. So what we learn here is that Paul uses faith for the working of the giftings that God has given us that we have all, in that sense, been given different kinds of gifts by the Spirit, and with that, different kinds of, of gifts of faith that we are meant to exercise, to, to bless and to help the body of Christ, and that these should not be cause of pride or even division. Basically, that's what Paul is after. He is not teaching that every believer has received the same amount of this kind of faith. And all this comes back to a big, assumption and misunderstanding in the word of faith, in the faith and prosperity gospel, which is that faith is something in and of itself. If faith had been something in, a, in and of itself, a power, a force or a substance, of course the question would be valid, how do we get a measure of this substance? But faith is relational. Faith is not a substance. Faith exists in the relationship with God, and I've spoken to that in several other places and videos. You can look at that. How to summarize this? Well, Romans 12, 3 is not about having the same amount of faith. It's actually the opposite. Before we end, let me give you a nugget of Bible interpretation that has been a great help to me. And that is, you can say that a certain interpretation of Scripture is wrong without you having to provide a better or even, a, you know, a right interpretation. What I mean by this is a good way of going forward is to cross out what a verse does not mean. And that's very helpful, even though you might not have settled what it actually means. For example, I know for a fact that 135 divided by 5 is not 1. All right? I might say that strongly and boldly without me having to know the right answer. I still have crossed out that one cannot be the right answer. This is very helpful because in some cases you are not able to settle for sure what a verse means, but you might be sure what it doesn't mean. So Romans 12.3, whatever it means, it does not mean what the Word of Faith says it means. I hope that this teaching has been a blessing to you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You can comment here or reach me on other places. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless you.